Hi everyone, welcome back to Novel Nomad and welcome to my Aussie April recommendations extravaganza list. I have selected quite a number of books, all of which I absolutely love and I absolutely 110% recommend. So hopefully most of them are available in your local library country, wherever you source your books from. I've picked a few that I know are coming out in the US and in UK soon in April itself. So hopefully that all works out. Some of them are already available overseas. So hopefully everyone who watches this video can select some books for Aussie April from this list. So let's start off. I've decided to do it by genre, just in case you have a particular genre that you're wanting to read. Um, it would be really handy just to like cherry pick which ones you want through. So starting off, I'm going to recommend a fiction work by Indigenous author set within an Indigenous community within Australia, which is brilliant. And that is The Yield by Tara June Winch. It's just come out in the US. I'm going to link that down below so you can find out as well. But this cover is also stunning. Um, it, it follows a young woman who basically comes back to her hometown and discovers that her grandfather has died but he was working on a dictionary of his local language and his indigenous cultural language so she tries to reconnect through country through her grandfather through discovering this language and re and reigniting the tongue in her voice again it's so brilliant i cannot recommend it enough and i hope everyone will pick this up for aussie april because i loved it i really did so next we've got some historical fiction. Now for everyone who loves Victober with me, um, I've got Salt Creek by Lucy Trelaw. This is set in South Australia, in Adelaide, so yay for local setting. Um, and what I love about this, it's set down in the Coorong. So a father who's come out and brought all of his family out to Australia um, from England, uh, they decide he, he's trying to make his money and way in the world and he constantly keeps failing. So they had a fairly well prospering cattle farm just south of Adelaide and the family lived quite well and then that failed. So he basically sold up everything and moved the family down to a very remote patch of farmland in the Coorong and there were still local Aboriginal communities living on that land. And it's just such a beautiful story because it's told from the perspective of the eldest daughter, Hester, and it's just about her life from a 15 year old and having to go through not only the shame of the family being ruined in this way, but also from her trying to be the strong one in the family when the, when things start to go wrong and everything she has to self-sacrifice in order to survive. And it's just beautiful, so, so beautiful. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I hope everyone who loves Longbourn, who likes all of those really beautiful, slow-moving, descriptive historical fiction set in the 1800s will pick this up because I loved it. You'll probably hear me say I loved it many times, but I have to say I did love All That I Am by Anna Funda. This is Anna Funda, who's normally a historian. She wrote a fiction work based on the true lives of two uh, young refugee women who escaped Germany to England and they were resistance um, in England and they their stories are so incredibly moving and emotional and oh, it's just just what they went through and it's so the reason why this is so emotionally moving is because so much of it is based in in true historical fact and really the only things that are made up in the way is emotions and feelings and um, verbal expressions because she had what happened to them but she didn't actually have their own diaries and things like that but it is such a brilliant book I do highly recommend World War II historical fiction which is a very popular genre and one that I absolutely recommend. Okay so let's move on to the crime readers. So all of you readers will know that I've recommended these quite a lot but because they're quite accessible I do I do still tote them a bit. Obviously we have The Dry by Jane Harper. This is set in Australia as well, has an excellent narrative voice and one that I highly recommend everyone thoroughly enjoy. And secondly, I have Solari Gentile's A Few Right Thinking Men, set in 1930s Australia, a bit more cosy crime era and it's a bit more of a mystery rather than a straight up murder mystery. And what is wonderful about this is it goes through different uh, political tensions that were happening in Australia and the world at the time, but it has a very nice Australian twist to it. Next, we're going into a classic, and this is a book that was written after World War II by, he was, I think he was 
from Norway and then he's uh, went to England and that, then he moved to Australia but he is known for his Australian novels and that is Neville Shute and A Town Like Alice. I am making him an honorary Australian for this list just because he did love Australian. He wrote some wonderful authentic Australian books from that era. So A Town Like Alice is obviously a, um, about Alice Springs but it's about a young woman who survived World War II in the Southeast Asia area um, that was occupied by the Japanese and she basically um, moves to Australia to find this man who uh, was an Australian soldier who helped her and he go she goes to his local community in far northeast in Queensland and um, which is an outback community and she starts to wants to revive it and make it as wonderful as Alice Springs. So everyone's come off middle grade March I might as well recommend some middle grade reads for everyone. First off we have the very very popular Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. Um, she is from Australia but it's been huge around the world this one and it's really really good fun. Um, it's not I wouldn't say it is it is Harry Potter it's not um, but it definitely has that wonderful magical whimsy and really great writing and incredible characters so I think this is a really good one just to spread the love for everyone and next we have uh, The Republic of Birds by Jessica Miller this is more of a fantasy and it's set in like a Russian fantasy world where a girl has to go into the Republic of Birds to help save her local community Jessica Miller is a Australian writer and this is released by Tex. I do believe it's coming out overseas soon so hopefully that will come out soon but this is wonderfully shiny. Okay so YA readers there are so many wonderful YA novels written by Australian authors out there. Obviously you know Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman but a classic one is Garth Nix, his book Sabriel which is forever on my favourites. Um, it's a really fascinating look at more of a necromancy kind of thing almost urban fantasy adventure story about a young woman whose father dies and she has to take over his job to send the dead back into the underworld which is always fabulously good fun next we have a book that is coming out in the US and around the world in April and that is It Sounded Better in My Head by Nina Kenworth this is ridiculously cute and fun so if you're wanting something light and lovely definitely recommend this one. It's about a young girl who's basically finished year 12 or the last year of school. Um, she's going to university next year and her parents suddenly announce that they're getting a divorce and she doesn't know what to do with that. Everything in her world has been so regimented and everything was going exactly to plan that she had and everything starts to change and so she is thrown into this completely distant world that she was not expecting but she starts to discover things about herself and the people around her and she starts to make new friends, new experiences and maybe get a romance or two in there. Speaking of romance, uh, one of my absolute favourite Australian romance novelists to recommend is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This is ridiculously good fun. It is popular all over the world. Um, it is really fun, basically haters to lovers trope in the romance but set in an office workplace in a publishing office too. So extra love for bookish love. Um, so yeah, so it's really fabulous and good fun. There is uh, options for a movie. I think they're actually cast the movie as well. So that's going to be really fabulous. But I do thoroughly recommend. Okay, so moving into poetry. Maxine Benever Clark, Carrying the World is mind-blowing. I loved it. It's It was so, so emotionally charged. It's excellent and it really draws some really big questions about how we treat people of minorities in society and it's wonderful. Next we have a collection of essays and that is City of Trees by Sophie Cunningham. I believe this is available. If not, it is now out in paperback in Australia so it's nice and cheap. Um, but what I love about Sophie Cunningham's The City of Trees is that not only does it really discuss how we are, how the environment affects not only our mentality but our everyday life. Um, she kind of pairs this with the loss of her two fathers and really tries to just move through that grief through dis discussing the importance of nature and it's a series of essays as well so that's really really fascinating format. Lastly let's move into a highly lauded uh, non-fiction so this is more for the true crime aficionados and it is This House of Grief by Helen Garner. Helen Garner is quite a well-known literary figure in Australia but what I loved about this one is 
in previous non true crime non-fictions that she's written, it has been heavily about Helen Garner's own experience and her voice and beliefs on the crime and also the trial itself. This one is very blank slate, which is wonderful. She pre presents it in a way that you are part of the jury and she is cataloging for you the evidence coming through and describing the scene in the, in the courtroom at the time. So it really allows you to decide if the person is guilty or not and if this crime that was committed if it has like a long-reaching effect on how we treat those within the community and within Australia legal system so it is really fascinating and it draws out so many questions but it truly makes the reader the judge okay so that is my absolutely enormous list of recommendations for Aussie April I I honestly probably have so many more that I could recommend. If you are looking for something in particular, let me know down in the comments down below. I'd be happy to recommend some more books. Um, if you are taking part in Aussie April, let me know what you're reading. Or if there's one from this list that you'd like to probably discuss a little bit further, let me know. And I'll see you next time. Happy reading. Bye.